My name's Tony Sabanskis, writer, filmmaker, inventor of the H-card, and world-renowned music constructionist, famed for my extensive research with the... and of course, as Chief Technical Officer on... Baseline! Now put a donk on it. The Electro! Put a donk on it! This week, our special guest is none other than the spectacularly fabulous... Are you recording now? Fuck yeah then, let's not waste any more time. Sit back and get ready for the highly informative, hugely entertaining, borderline annoying... Custard Room Podcast! Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we just recorded probably 20 minutes of um, interview without actually yeah. recording. So it, was just, it was just a warm-up, that, mate, just to yeah. get you into the swing of it. <laughs> I've got to start so again because if I come into this, repeat it all, if I come into this conversation where we were having it, then no one know what the heck we're on about, <laughs> will they? Yeah. Although it did get over the fact I used that expletive. Well, let's let's do the uh, introduction. Let's have the next tune. <laughs> <laughs> let's have so introduce. By the way, mix a cockney. I don't know whether you're all going to get confused about the way he speaks or anything, but I, if if need be, I'll, will uh, you not have listeners outside the region? This is, is this strictly regional. <laughs> Probably not. No. Quite so well. so introduce, uh, first yeah, of all, first of all, introduce yourself. Are you recording? Who you are? Yeah, definitely. I am definitely recording. A right. big red flashing light. Okay. My name's Mick Farr. I'm a lecturer at the University of Bolton, and I lecture in uh, aspects of film and media production, uh, specifically uh, shooting, single camera shooting, and lighting techniques. But also, uh, people call the th- more theoretical aspects. My MA and my PhD are in art histories and visual cultures, so that I'm able to discuss how to analyse different visual cultures from different theoretical perspectives. Hmm. Sounds all very kind of like intellectual masturbation, which it probably is. A, l- a little bit, yeah. It's important. It's, it's quite quite high end though. Listen, you d- <laughs> I know you don't subscribe to this notion, but I if do. you, if you make a film <laughs> and you want an audience to re- watch it and understand it, they that you have to understand how they read images. Yeah, yeah, I get that. And yeah. if you don't, then obviously you 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 could hit you could miss the mark miss your target and that's what all it is 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 just understanding you know which kind of demographic would view certain things certain ways and why and why if you look back in history at certain things they've been shaped in a certain way and yeah it is intellectual masturbation really it doesn't serve any real purpose sometimes i i see it as like um, the microwave yeah i know that if i put my food inside the microwave i switch it on uh so (laughs) But I don't really know how it works internally. You know, I don't know how it scrambles the molecules and heats. No, it up. but that's no. That's a, such a poor analogy, Tony. That's such a poor analogy. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> you do because it, it's 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 interesting. I was reading something on uh, color theory the other day, oh. and uh, talking about how if you get the color wheel, do you know the color wheel, the color circle? Yeah, you know the, the spectrum. Yeah. yeah. So if you take uh, you know opposing colors and and that, how they relate to one another and how we see them depending on what culture we live in makes us feel a certain way. You're talking about connotation of colors. Yeah. With, so I'd say red over here is like a danger. Yeah, but it's more subtle than that you can have combinations of colors. So you can mm. you can have uh, colors that complement and colors that uh, will clash. Yeah. And they do certain things, and by Develop it by an, an understanding of that within your... If you're a picture maker, which you are as a filmmaker, if you can understand that, and that issues of composition and, and screen direction and, and movement, what you can do is you can manipulate your audience. You can make them feel uncomfortable. You can make them feel... Yeah. So, for example, and this won't mean anything to your listeners, but the, the, the conventional way of filming uh, a, a close-up of somebody is you put their face on one side of the screen and the direction they're looking has more empty space. So so the head is in one half of it yeah. and their eyes are pointing to the empty half and that's called looking space. You know that. Yeah. Now, if you I- invert that, Hitchcock used to do this a lot, you put their head in the other side. So actually they're looking to the edge of the picture right. and the empty space is behind their head. The implication is something's going to come up from them from behind. Right. So you you know you start saying, hang on, what's going wrong here? Something I expect it's maybe a monster or a mugger or something. Yeah, and it's by understanding how people read images and read colours and read every, all that sort of thing that you get to manipulate your audience to such a degree that you can make them, as with great horror films, all jump at the same time or yeah. all cry at the same time or all laugh at the same time. Genre specific though, I would have thought. 
Uh, yes, yeah. yes, it's genre spe- specific. But if you watch something that doesn't have anything like that, it just becomes shoddy and lacks interest. Yeah. There's no structure to it. But you, you do whether you do it consciously or unconsciously, it's difficult with you because you're a filmmaker and I've seen your films and they're good films. Yeah. Now, if you're not aware of it, it doesn't hmm. mean to say it doesn't exist. I, th- I mean, sometimes, you know, I understand about connotation and, and, think, and, and bits of film grammar and the rest of it, but... I don't really concentrate on it that much. No, no, but that's because you know it's like it's like I I understand about full stops and uh, you know grammar and structure and syntax, yeah. but I don't think about those when I'm talking or yeah. reading a book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you know I, I I'm aware of them there. You, you, they happen, but if you see, that's why some films are just. Poor. In fact, you, do you have satellite TV? Yeah. I, tell you, I live in the. <laughs> I live in Boulder. I don't live in a cave. <laughs> <laughs> But if you look at some of those really dodgy channels like uh, sci-fi oh, movies, oh, right, yeah, no, yeah, you know, yeah. we're really low-budget films. Mm. You think, God, there's a film that sounds really, really good, The Aliens from Outer Space or something like that, you know. Yeah, that sounds good. And then you, you watch it and you think, this is appalling. How can this be so bad? Yeah. And yeah, it's yeah. because they've not mastered all those complexities of filmmaking. Filmmaking is a yeah, hugely yeah, yeah. complex language and uh, uh, way of communicating with people. There'll be a, a multiple reasons why the bad is, and oh, normally yeah. they have bad acting in it. They have bad, <laughs> really bad hair. Yeah, <laughs> this is just everything. They got nineteen seventies perms. Hair. The blokes. We were, I was talking about this to Peter because there's there's a company. I can't remember the company's name, but it's quite a well known company that do do sort of if if Lord of the Rings is being brought out, they will bring out their version. Yeah, do you know, yeah. Captain of the Golden Ring or whatever. Yeah, it, yeah. You know, like whatever. How far they can push it to sort of yeah. mimic this film, and what they do. They make tons of money on these B movies, you know, yeah. through the you know through sort of what they've spent on the budget and what yeah. they're getting back as as profit, and what they do a percentage of that, a good percentage of it as well, they put it into documentaries that oh, they don't really? make a bean on, yeah, and it's um, it's one of them, and it's quite a big company. Well, it's it's a company that constantly gets sued mm. or attempted to get yeah. sued by other other like sort of production companies and everything, but I thought that was a, that was a good thing because really they know that they're making bad films, yeah. But they're making it just to make money, so they can go and make good films. Well, I, I I'm old enough to just about remember the demise of the B movie, mm. double mm. billing. I, I used to love B movies. Oh, absolutely, and and it was exactly it's great for young filmmakers, but also it's it's just you know entertaining. There's one yeah. I saw yeah. is about this detective called Jack Russell, right, and right. it's great. And of course, you know, he had a dog, but you know, yeah, and it's all in black and white. Right, right. It's just you just think, what a shame that there is. That, like that sounds more like a noir thing, that a detective oh, it, black and white. Well, it was it was fake noir, you right, know, right, uh, right. neo noir, you know. But right. it, it was it was a comedy, and it was right, it was only right. I think about half an hour long, and it was a B movie. There's one called um, Strange Brew. It's got uh, Eric Moranis in it when he was. Or is it Rick Moranis? Rick, Rick Moranis. So it used to be Eric Moranis. He changed oh, right. it. Yeah, he changed his name. Um, must have been catchier. Rick yeah. than Eric. <laughs> so he, he changed it, but it's him and uh, a Canadian comedian. I think he's Canadian anyway, and they play these... Um, in fact, God, what's his name? Max von Sydow's in it. And it's a, it's a B-movie, Max von Sydow. Old guy in loads of horror films. Oh, right. and sort of um, Yeah, really yeah. well-known, really well-known actor. Um, and he's in it, and it's about these two guys that go up to this brewery. And sort of, but it's... When, when you... Like, the premise of it just sounds boring, but... They were sort of two comedy characters, these two. It was brilliant. Canadian film. Yeah. And really unknown sort of um, film. But, yeah, the, you know, they don't always have to be superbly sharp no, and, and all I think the rest of it to, to be a it, good film. In many ways, I think it must be so difficult. I know that I know that young filmmakers have so many platforms now to, to show their work on. It's, it's, really, yeah. but it's this idea that the, the palace, the, the, the temple of film, which yeah. is the cinema... There was there was kind of this option, the B movie, yeah, and that's why they were called, you know, the Picture Palace and things like that. You yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were given amazing names and of of places of worship almost. And if you could get, if you start your career by making films that were shown alongside the big films, just as ways bands used to support bands, you yeah, know. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm you know, I don't want to yak on about yesteryear, but I, I think, uh, who was it was saying? I think it's David Bowie was being interviewed a while ago about. Uh, access to music and, and access right. to platforms for musicians yeah. and he was saying that the problem is with any currency the more there is of it the less its value yeah it dil- dilutes the whole thing yeah no yeah. I, I agree with that and I, I agree with that with film as well you know, uh, on, and anything really now education yes you know you, you get somebody who's got who's being dragged through their course who doesn't really 
or shouldn't really be on it, and yet they've they've got their pass yeah, at the end. They've got this, go. you know, at the end of the day, they've got the same qualification. Are as you recording been, this? I, I am recording. Yeah, okay. <laughs> well, it's interesting, isn't it? It's like it's like talking about uh, the penal system. Yeah, uh, it's, people say, well, what should people go to prison for? And everybody wants one yeah. answer, but the problem is there isn't one answer. There's several. And so yeah. if we take yeah, it yeah. back to education. Uh, sorry to interrupt there obviously this is, oh, this yeah, is dialogue done, yeah. isn't it yeah, yeah. it's not it's not the Mick Farr show the thing about education it's it's for lots of reasons yeah. okay it should be for the betterment for anybody who takes part in it ultimately yeah. but what what do we mean by that the betterment well actually it could be personal just purely personal development you know I did my MA because I wanted to I just wanted to learn something because as a cameraman I'd stopped learning the nature of the programs I was worked on mm. didn't require me to learn any anything new yeah so it's self, you know, purely for sort of selfish reasons. Other people do it for training. Should education be training? Well, it should have elements maybe, but should that be the sole purpose? Do I want to retrain? Yeah. Well, no, I, I actually just want to expand my mind and develop my intellect. It's, it's, yeah, PGCE, you know, you're teaching qualification, things like that. That is just purely training. I don't think anybody would do that just for pleasure or to advance themselves. No, I mean, so specific, it would be strange, but there's no reason why you shouldn't want to yeah, learn yeah. more about, if you've been educated, which you'd have been through the system, why yeah. wouldn't you want to learn more about the system that's developed you? I'm not saying that, I'm just saying that we we very, very quickly want a single answer for something that's far too complex. Yeah, now, yeah. Going back to your point, which is, you, say, say a, a, one student who's dedicated for his, themselves into something leaves with a 2-1, and somebody who asses around and gets a 2-1, Yeah. You know that's not well, fair. No, if they if they get the same qualification, then they must have they must have been just better. They could ask about and still be just yes, the absolutely. Same level. They're, they're well, underachieving in many ways. What I'm saying is, you've got a BA. I've got a BA. Yeah. So mine's a first, for instance. Yeah. Just. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it is a first, and well deserved too. <laughs> yeah. Only just though, scrape through. But on the um, say, someone's got a Desmond. Do you know a, a two two? <laughs> Then they didn't deserve, and they're going. Yeah, I've got a, I've got a degree. Yeah. I've got a degree. You know, we're both going for the same job. Normally, they don't really care what what the grade is of the degree. No, they don't. They don't. In my experience, and I've done research into this, albeit largely anecdotal, but I've done other forms of research and, mm. and I've written about it in one article. The the people who will be making those judgments about giving said students a job, yeah, won't do it off the back of their grade that might yeah. that'd be the first one. so so you know and people often do this when they when they argue a point what they do is they quickly shut down other avenues of information that might show that their argument is flawed so in this case yeah. i think your argument's flawed because ultimately they will sit those two students down and there's one student who has got a ba perhaps for your first because they were a really good filmmaker blah 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 really good and, and can talk about it all day long then they've got this other person who's scraped through and can't actually tell the difference between his arse and the hole in the ground. Yeah. It's clear which one they're going to go for. Yeah. But that's if they get to interview stage. Well, yes, but what, then, you know, you're shifting the goalposts. Why wouldn't they get <laughs> yeah, to interview? Because you're, you're saying if they go for a job, <laughs> they're going to What if they don't go for it? Well, they and that's if they turn up for the interview. <laughs> yes. <that's, laughs> I have no doubt that yeah. those students who develop the most. And I, I judge my my princ- approach to education and I'm very principled in this is is that the thing about education it should take you from your position where you enter position A to position B and it should make that distance as far as possible wherever that might be yeah. whether that's a first or a third as long as that distance from where you start to where you end is very considerable yeah. then it's been worthwhile experience. Yeah. So in that regard I have no doubt that if you put a lot of effort into something and you develop make that discipline, people will find you much more interested, much more willing to spend time with you and work with you. Yeah. Yeah. Perhaps not you know, I mean let's face it, you know, it's when you go for a job at the BBC, say, there are so many people, you know, they you are up against it. But the BBC don't really want to employ people who aren't very good. The, I think the BBC's changed slightly now. Um but let's say say so seven years ago, something eight years yeah. ago, they were looking for people very specific, like you were saying before, yeah. uh, where you had to be very specific in yes. your, your your designated area, like 
I'm a cameraman. I'm a lighting guy. I'm this. I'm Probably that. longer than seven or eight years ago, but yeah, I take your point. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I think now it's slightly changing to well, the point where they want people that can edit and they can they do their own I know they do. Right. I know they do. Right. I know. I've uh, one of my students came to give a talk here at the university, and she. I taught her. So be. I worked with her seven years ago at Chester. Right. And very similar to yourself. Uh, in many ways, you know, experienced, uh, younger than you, but very experienced in terms of all aspects of it, research, yeah. filming, all that. Great student. She got a job at the BBC, entry level, and now she goes around the world working on Blue Peter, right. shooting films, directing films, and editing them. Right. So she she has taken three jobs that would have existed when I started. Yeah. You know, and that's exactly what they want. And they want people who are hungry to do that so that you can take your inspiration and be inspired because you go elsewhere. They don't really want staff either because they'd much rather you spend a year with them and then go and work somewhere else to pick up much more inspiration. Yeah, they do their own um, like training courses, don't they? They do, and yeah. You can't, and, and part of the remit for that is you can't have attended a, a university. university. no. Yeah, so you've just got to go straight to them. But that's uh, but that's <clears throat> not the only way you could get into the business. Oh, no, 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 I mean... The, 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 but the they've always done training. Things. I mean, I did a yeah. BBC training course. I, I, I passed their film training course. Yeah, we used to pitch Radio to Radio 4 to the drama and oh, uh, yeah, factual. Yeah. Oh, my God. It was, oh, it was horrendous. Really? Why? It was just full of pretentious <laughs> assholes. It really was. <laughs> there were just these two northern sort of working <laughs> class guys rocked in there and they, and they were sort of, you know, they were talking about Nietzsche and I was just, oh, I was half falling asleep at but the But you bio. should be all right Shut now. Up, just get on with it. We do comedy. What's wrong with you? You should be all right now because uh, BBC is uh, tied into up. the BAME thing, isn't it? Black Asian minority ethnic and Northerners are minority, minority <laughs> yeah, you ethnic, you think, Yeah, you'd think so, but we're not. We're not classed <laughs> this, as a not. This is a true minority. story and I can't, because I know this will go out and potentially, I can't give you any names. Yeah, no, yeah, that's fine. But a certain person told me that they were at... Now, I think it was a Channel 4 meeting. Maybe it's Channel 5, but I think it's Channel 4. Mm. And they were talking about hard-to-reach audiences, right? making programs for hard-to-reach audiences. And somebody said, what do you mean by hard-to-reach? I, I was going to say, do you, are you talking Jeremy Kyle's audience? Or? What they mean is northerners. That was what they said. <laughs> People in the north. <laughs> That's great, isn't it? Have you ever seen the Harry Enfield, the 50 years of BBC? No, oh, no, I don't he, think so. he did. He did. Um, it was. It was like last year or something like that, and he did an hour special. Oh, I did. Yes, no, fifty I did, years yeah, of the yeah. BBC Two, I think it was. <laughs> Yeah. The, the, where he was describing um, bringing sort of com comedy to, hey, yeah. up, I've, I've got a broken wheel on me, yeah. Well, why don't you use your whip? Oh, it was brilliant, did, really, did, really, really good. Who did that sketch, Adopt an Orthener? Was it, was that Chumley Waller? Was it no, Harry I, Enfield? No, uh, might not, I'm trying to think who it was, it'll come back to you. There's this whole thing where they, you adopt a northerner and they got, they're all like drinking tenants and they come to tracky <laughs> bottoms and, that, and it's really posh people and they look after <laughs> it. Oh, oh mummy, can we keep the northerner? Can we keep the northerner? <laughs> but yeah, so, but yeah, apparently hard to reach nor uh, audiences of northerners. I don't know if that means right. hard to reach via the rail infrastructure or right. intellectually. It pro possibly intellectually. Oh, that, that's what they would have been hinting at. <laughs> I mean, we, we do get a bad rep because if you watch Jeremy Kyle, it's based in Manchester. Um, yeah. I've been in Media City when they've been kicking off. Do you know that my, my friend's got a studio in the same building, so he sees mm. them going up and down in the lift. You oh, know, well, the, I'll the tell you stories about Jeremy Kyle. Oh, well, I never worked on Jeremy Kyle, but as a cameraman, I was doing a behind the scenes on Jeremy right. Kyle. Oh, right. So that, yeah. Yeah, yeah no, yeah, I've yeah, been yeah. there, but I didn't. Name I didn't, drop. No, no, well, I thought that's what you were, <laughs> what got me well. in for. <laughs> you got, tell you, there's two stories. One is there's a, a, young, a young lad who had been dragged in by this woman who'd said that he was the father of her baby. Right. And you see them in, because the, we're filming backstage and seeing them through the crowd now, and he's got all his best clothes on, looking a bit smart. She's got her best clothes on that. Yeah. And they're doing a DNA test. And clearly, I mean, the way she recounts it is clearly he would just go out on the lash, get really, really drunk. And when he couldn't find anyone else, he'd slope off down to her house for a quickie, you know, and it's, it's just right, using right, right. her, really. And yeah, she got yeah. pregnant and she had a baby. And he said, no, I didn't, I didn't. DNA test, that's it, proves the baby's his. Yeah. So we've then filmed as they come out and the uh, there's a psychologist there is paid to make sure that everyone's okay. Is it the guy, the regular guy? Really yeah. Gone? Right, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, and so we had to wait in the room for him and this lad to come in. Right. And this lad, remember, he's doled up, he's looking the smartest because he's on TV and all that. And they yeah, come yeah. in. And I tell you what, I don't think this kid had had a wash in about a year. Right. Jesus, he stank to piss and sweat. Oh, you know, 
And I'm thinking, how how did any girl let you near them? Yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyway, so I was mentioning this to the researcher outside, and I said, Jesus, they stink. You know what is in this? Well, no, 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 no. <laughs> not at all, Northern. My wife's Northerner. She's from Liverpool. All right, she's, right. She's so we we don't really class scouts as Northerners. They're a different breed altogether. Because <laughs> you lot are woolly backs, aren't you? Um, yeah, if you're, that, if you're not a scouser, you're a woolly back. Oh, anyway. Right. My story hasn't finished yet because the, yeah, no, sorry, I talked to the researcher and she said, oh, that's nothing. She said, it's always like that. They always smell. She said, but I'll tell you what, uh, the last show we did, uh, there's a girl came down from the northeast and she'd been brought down because a uh, similar thing, you know, DNA test on that. Yeah. She got the young baby and she brought her mate down with her because she wasn't with the fella anymore. So put him in a hotel, the holiday inn or something, her, the baby and her mate. Yeah. They said I had to meet them at the studio door in the morning. It's the old Granada Studios. Yeah, yeah. And she called her name out and she came over with me and she said, uh, yeah, and she said, where's the baby? And she went, oh, God, yeah, I've left it in a hotel room. Oh, for fuck's sake. That's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> it's great, isn't it? I left it in a hotel room. Well, social services not been called straight away? I know. And they, because they're saying they're really happy because there's like mini bars and things like that. Yeah, they're not yeah, supposed yeah. to have any, but they, of course, they come. Yeah, oh, God, yeah, so, yeah. I was filming once down at the... Uh, Alton Towers, we stayed in the Alton Towers Hotel. Right. And uh, there's a Cadbury room and all that there that, where there's a jar yeah. of sweets. And it's, oh, right. the jar of sweets on the shelf in the Cadbury room, yeah. it was then, I don't know if it's still is bolted to the mantelpiece. <laughs> so I was saying to the person who was wandering around filming, I said, why is it bolted? Yeah, it's made of plastic. You can't throw it anywhere. You say, oh, people will nick it. Yeah, which they would. Yeah, I said, yeah. really? I said, oh, they'll nick anything. She said, we had a phone call a few weeks ago. This family moved into the room and they phoned up and said, what? Well, uh, you know, where's the shower? And she said, what, where's the shower? It's next to the bedroom. He said, no, I know where the shower room is, but where's the shower? Oh they went God, up and they'd nicked the, the shower. shower. <laughs> <laughs> Chucked it out of the window, taking it for scrap. No way. Unbelievable. So you've been a cameraman and lighting technician? Lighting cameraman, I lighting was. Cameraman. I, I started as a film assistant. I, I can't remember if this was a bit that you didn't record. I know, yeah. yeah. I started as a film assistant. I got a job at the BBC at Ealing as a trainee film assistant cameraman. Right, right, right. And what you do there, your job there is to... You know, prep all the camera, uh, make sure the film stock's loaded, the right film stock, the right filters. We used to use filters in those days yeah, to get yeah. colour correction. You don't do white balances on film cameras. So we'd have to carry all the equipment and we had to know about it. And we used to do have to go on a training course. Right. That's three months in the classroom and then eight months, four months in class and eight months on the road. And then you pass your tests, you know. Right, right, right. So I did that and then I moved up to Manchester. That was part of my contract with it once I finished how, training. How old at this point? Uh, I'd finished my, I'd done my degree, so I'd got the BBC 85, so I was 22. Uh, right. So I was 23 when I moved back up to Manchester, because I did my first degree in Manchester. Right, right. All oh, right, we're well, right. The poly, it was a polytechnic then. All oh, right, right. Poly. Cool. Uh, now MMU. Hmm. And then I stayed at Manchester, and then I promoted to film lighting cameraman after several years, you know, you move on up. And then I was there, I was BBC all, to get, all told 10 and a half years, and then I was freelance for 15 years. Right. That's where you work, you know, working for all sorts of people. Different little production companies. Yep, <clears throat> anybody really, any broadcaster, one or two corporates, not many. Right. Uh, but mostly mostly broadcast. What, what type of programmes are you working on with the BBC? Everything. We I've done massive... Uh, Big scale period dramas as like second unit or focus pulling and things like that. What would that be? That upstairs, downstairs? <laughs> <laughs> the side side, yeah. One was called Mr. Rose Virgins. You, you wouldn't oh, even know this. No, no. I don't. No, no. No. So it's funny. So I've got people, quite a good um, uh, knowledge about film and TV, though, in general. All right. Yeah, Mr. Rose bad. Virgins was one. I'm trying to think. Middle March was another. That's a massive one I worked on. No, I don't know that either. <laughs> so I could say anything. Star Trek. Did you work on Star Trek? Uh, yeah. What else <laughs> yeah, was it? Yeah. Yeah. E.T. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Mostly documentary, <laughs> mostly factual is what I did. Right, right. And right. the difference is between uh, factual and documentary is, is, or features really, I suppose. It's, they well, it's fa factual entertainment. It's factual it, entertainment. You're talking come down with me, aren't you? I did some of that, yeah. Did, did yeah. A little bit of that. But I did documentaries as well. In fact, quite a few of my documentaries won awards. Ah, right. You oh, you, yeah, you... you yeah, BAFTAs? So, RTS. RTS. Yeah. Uh, one, right. one documentary won a BAFTA, a children's documentary I shot when I was a uh, young assistant move, making that move. And do, you get, do you get a BAFTA? No, no, it wasn't for the was camera. Was it like the it. director? Yeah, it's the uh, producer and director get it. But, you know, you work yeah, on no, it. Yeah, no, you've worked it's on it. It's a great yeah, show. Oh, yeah, yeah, but, but. I worked some really talented people. Uh, and then, you know, you just, you just, some people love it. And I grew out of it, you know, for one reason or another. 
but yeah, to all sorts of programs. What what got you interested in it in the first place? Do you know what? I was thinking about this because I was listening to your last broadcast. Yes, yes. Uh, we make them. We make our guests listen to the, yeah, the previous yes. one. <laughs> it's, it let me out of the room. <laughs> With what's his name? Uh, Peter Slater. Peter Slater. Because I thought Peter Slater was someone else. Right. Because I only know him obviously as his characters. Oh, and yeah, I thought yeah, he was yeah. a guy called Pete Baker. Right, and right. Pete Baker has his own radio show and does big. He's corporate. Pete Baker, yeah, yeah. But he's, yeah, know, yeah. he's a really nice guy, Pete Baker. I thought, God, it's Pete Baker. But as soon as I listened to him, it wasn't. Anyway, yeah, oh, you were disappointed then, weren't you? When you no, 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 no. That's an aside. I'm just <laughs> filling out, you know, we've got, you know, <laughs> how many minutes in are we? So, what got me into it? Do you know what? What it was, I was thinking, in all honesty, it was escapism. As right. a young lad, I, I came from a broken home and it kind of rocked me a bit and I was kind of quite insecure, uh, not, right. not really knowing what was going to happen you know as a kid i think if you're if if you're that way inclined and you you rely on a, a tight family unit and it falls apart it can really shake you and then you look for things to try and obviously stabilize you once again and for me yeah. it was escapism of cinema right. and i would just i would just watch films i go to cinema some i went to cinema three times in one week once uh, I, I used to do that. I, I used to go on my own as well. Didn't oh, you go all, on your own? all yeah, the yeah, time. Yeah. I went to see one film twice. I loved it oh, so yeah. much. Which the Buddy Holly story with, what's his name, who actually learned to play the guitar. Oh, God, yeah. Um, I can't think. Gary Boosie. Yes, yeah, The Fantastic Teeth. Fantastic film. Yeah. Gary The Teeth Boosie. And he actually learned, the, he played all the music himself. He's mental, though, isn't he? Is he? Yeah. Yeah, he's uh, I've, he was on yeah, yeah. yeah, he's on Big Brother. Re- oh, you know no. that guy over, yeah, recently. Oh, oh my goodness, shame. yeah, yeah. How can you play go from Buddy Holly to Big Brother? <clears throat> he's been in big films, hasn't he? Lethal Weapon. He yeah. played the um, the prime villain in in Lethal Weapon, fighting Jeez. Mel Gibson with his karate. That's right, he did. Yeah. 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 See, what I should have said is, how can you go from Buddy Holly to Big Bopper? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. They both died together, didn't they? They did, yeah. A little plane crash. They did, yeah. Yeah, Father, Son and Holy Ghost. Don McLean, American Pie, it's all about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, what's the same? How do we get into it? So, cinema, loved watching films. And then when I was about 13, there was a series on BBC Two. We just got BBC Two at our house. We only had a black and white TV, which didn't matter because this series was all in black and white and it's called Ealing Studios. Right. It's in the summer and at 7.30 it had a 20-minute... Pathé newsreel, right, and then an Ealing classic Ealing film, and yeah. it was on for several weeks, right. and I was l- enthralled. I couldn't believe this was like disappearing to a different planet. When you say classic Ealing film, what yeah. was the description? What do you mean? Man in the white suit. All oh, right, was that was uh, Alec Guinness? Alec Guinness, oh, it's a brilliant film. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, 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 yeah. So there was. I'm trying to think what the others. Uh, because because yeah. you basically painted that with its own genre, like being an Ealing film. If you will. Yes, yeah, and they were they were and they discussed they've been written about the the Ealing studio films. Yeah. are almost of their own genre. So right. you have got you know scary sort of scary sinister movies. You've got you know other types of movies, comedies, uh, Passport to Pimlico. Right. You know which is is more a commentary on. You know, uh, I suppose the way the country was being run at the time, and right. and also trying to regroup. You know, in the times it, facing the war and just the problems that the war brings, it it's a response to that. It's it's kind of like you know we all get together when the when the chips are down. We we might have a differences, but we pull together. So it's yeah. huge social commentary. Man in the white suit is you know indicative of all the fears, the post-war fears of what science had done to the planet since the world yeah. war. Yeah, yeah. So I. I loved these films. I didn't know any of that. I'd never really studied film history or anything like that. I just loved them. And I, after that, uh, one of our teachers set up a film club where they used to get we used to get big reels of film oh, right. and yeah, hire yeah, yeah. the yeah. hall at the local teacher training college and play these films. And I saw Mash there, the original Mash with Donald Sutherland. And, oh and right, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's loads of great the, the films. dialogue in that's brilliant. Where did? Oh, it's it's like, it's sort of if you if it was done today it'd be almost like a mistake because the the background audio of people chatting on a table is it's just really, as loud yeah, as I the know, dialogue you're that you're trying to pick up. Like it's really when you see is it what I'm amazed at is the standard when I see good students work now yeah and you see the quality of work compared to then it is so far in advance of some of these classic films like, yeah you know yeah. you're absolutely right oh, no i think that was done completely on purpose it sort of brought you into but it's, it's so unsubtle table, though you know? isn't it yeah yeah whereas yeah. i see students work now and this is the good thing about seeing uh, you know looking back at the history of the development for, for young filmmakers is that yeah. you can see what has gone before and you can build on it or adopt it or change it or shift it yeah, yeah don't yeah. start and finish only from your own mind yeah 
Uh, but Although I think I think few few students do get caught up in the quality issue. You know, everybody wants to shoot 4K. And it yeah, just, I wish I tell wish I, I wish they'd get more hung up about his sound. Yes, as yeah, a cameraman I do as well. Yeah. Uh, you know, it, it's funny because I. I used to work with Electra here, who's no longer here, sadly, uh, a sound guy. It's funny because he would... L- little guy with sandals. Little guy, so you should interview him, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to, yeah. You should, actually. I, I will do, yeah, yeah. But he would always use images as a great motivation for his sound lectures. And I always mm. use sound. And I think we often discuss this. And the reason is that when, as a cameraman on film, certainly you know you are only dealing with silent images because yeah. you don't record sound on film. Yeah. So I was constantly made aware of what sound is going going because your eyes to the viewfinder and your eye on film camera had to be pushed right up to the viewfinder. You can't use screens because light used to get in through the viewfinder and fog the film. Yeah. So it's yeah. right up like the, against your face, and you're thinking, what sounds? What sounds do I need? What sounds can I see? Yeah. That I need to tell the recordist. I can see that person speaking. We need to be able to get good sound, or I can't see them speaking. He doesn't have to worry about the sound. Yeah. So yeah. I always think sound is so important, and I, I'm, I'm now fortunate enough to judge for the regional RTS students and regional RTS craft skills up here. Right. And I tend to be doing post-production because they're, they're, it's got to be in categories that I'm not submitting films from my students from. Yeah. And I remember giving one clip, it's in a craft awards for the professionals, not students, and this was about sound post-production. And this scene, right. it's an amazing scene. It's, it's a kid's comedy. Just yeah. a kid, to say, just a kid's comedy, not massive budget. This bloke, this sort of typical dad who's always been, you know, nagged up by his family. He goes into his caravan, his dingy old caravan. It's like his shed on wheels to do something. Yeah. And unbeknownst to him, his wife has uh, paid for a bit taken to the tip. So why well, is it his caravan? Yeah. Oh, All right, right. So the lorry comes, picks it up, and he's in the caravan. So there's this little scene where he's going round and round, like, hey, let me out, let me out. You just think nothing of it. 37 layers of sound went into this little scene. Oh, right, right, right. Every little bit, bottles clinking, screeches and tires, people bipping horns. Yeah, Most yeah. of it wasn't even there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you think yeah. that is such a wonderful world of creativity. Yeah. And everyone's saying 4K this, 4K that. Yeah. But if you can hear the... of all the sound dubbing, cutting together badly. Yeah. They, they used to say, uh, for every drama, that you can hear a dog barking in the background. Yeah. You know, just little things like that that wouldn't have been there, obviously, on yeah. the take, but just putting this in adds that little tiny bit of reality. There's, uh, <clears throat> we've had a, I've worked with this guy who uh, I brought him on board this semester. He's doing his PGCE, but his background is in Foley. Right. And he absolutely loves Foley. Yeah, but. And he had some brilliant material. And one of them was, it, I think it was the barking dog. Right. Or something like that. And he, he played, oh no, it was a scream. It was a scream, that was it. Right. Off, off camera scream of in a piece of action, you hear somebody screaming, and he yeah. played about seven, eight different films exactly the same, same screen, scream. Same scream. Do, do you know a lot um, of sort of Foley artists and, and sound designers use the James Brown um, scream Ow! for different, like, sort of cats and other, you know, like, uh, especially for monsters? There's numbers of times where I've been watching these sci fi, especially the sort yeah. of low, lowish budget yeah. sci fis, and then all of a sudden, even Star Trek. Star Trek's a prime. Fantastic. In one of the Star Trek films, you can hear James Brown screaming, and it's a cat, like Fantastic, a cat woman. Yeah. It's just ridiculous. But it is, it's that. It's, it's that. <clears throat> so I, I, it's funny how people are, so many people are drawn to film and TV production mm. because of the visual aspect. Yeah. And yeah, I think yeah. it's a great shame because they're, I always say that the rectangle of the screen is the window onto another world. Yeah. But the world itself is created through your ears. Yeah. Sounds, sounds a weird metaphor. It's a very high culture, don't you? I am, yes. Yeah. That's what I learned. In, in, what? Before you, you came in, he was eating quail eggs in his Winnebago. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you from? Where am I from? Yeah. Originally, Leighton Buzzard in Cotswolds. Bedfordshire. <laughs> because no, bollocks. Leighton Buzzard in Bedfordshire. Right, right, but right. it was a, a market town, so it was a bit of a country town. Oh, and right, I moved right. up to a place called Matlock in Derbyshire. I, I know Matlock. It's yeah. lovely, isn't it? That's, that's not south. We're south from here, Bolton. <laughs> so, everywhere's south from here. <laughs> yeah. I think Scotland's south from <laughs> Bolton. No, from Leighton Buzzard. Leighton Buzzard in Bedford, that's just outside London. Right, right. But right. I never wanted... I moved to Derbyshire when I was 10, and I didn't... I, I, I fought the accent. I, I, I'm going to say, yeah, your oh, accent well. still is, must be still as strong. Well, who... Aspires having a northern accent. <laughs> Listeners, the Game of Thrones. Game People of Thrones. who watch Game of Thrones. 
<laughs> I remember the line though. It's uh, winter's coming. Is that Did right? You, yeah, that's the line. That yeah. right? No, I mean, I don't know. It's just a dive shack. What what it was is no. It's just because obviously I I've, I've been taken out of my home and my school, and put yeah, into yeah. other place. Yeah. And to a certain extent, when you're ten, you've got a degree of notoriety. If you turn up, and they were going to eat up bag yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. you're going all right, my mate. You yeah, know, yeah. you know, downy apples and pears. And I, I think automatically people with a, like a southern accent seem a higher class. Have you never terrible. said that? Like, said are you posh. middle class? Yeah. Or are you posh? You said bath. I was yeah, posh because yeah. I had a bath. I mean, most of them didn't. <laughs> yeah. but not I was outside. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I say bath, I said bathroom indoors. If you were lucky, you had it on your own. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're there, not with a neighbour. <laughs> but I don't know why people say bath, you know, is a... Uh, I tell you, I went to a, a conference a while ago, and this bloke came up, and he's from the West Country. Right. Well, oh, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, he said, and he said, it's it's great. He said, uh, sorry about the accent. He says, uh, but the, I can't do it. He says, so the good thing about this is if people don't have very high expectations of you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. They already yeah. feel sorry. They already think that he's uh, yeah. drinking his cider before exactly, he's coming yeah. back in his little clear pot. Right, we're going to, I'm going to go to a section. Are you right. ready for this one? Yep. Yes, folks, you guessed it. It's time for your favorite part of the show. It's the Frugal Filmmaker segment. Enjoy! Frugal filmmaking. Has so, it been recording? I'm lost now. Yeah, yeah. Okay, we're still recording. It. Did okay. you not hear it? <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is... It's all glamour, it's, isn't it? Radio. <laughs> it's not even radio, is it? <laughs> no, no. We've got, a, we've got a much bigger audience. Well, not audience. Why don't you a put much this bigger show on, scan. on a radio local? What's it? Bol- Bolton FM. Bolton FM are terrible communicators. Are they? I had a radio player, uh, Napoleon Merriweather. Yeah, yeah. Brilliant script. Peter played yes, Napoleon. Yes, yes, I know, yeah. Uh, re- really good. Just wouldn't sort of communicate with me at all. I was going, like, just play it free, you know, as many times as you want. And, yeah, they just never got back really? to me. Just, you tried anywhere else with it? Not really, no. It was still early, early doors with, with what we're doing at the minute with the podcast. Yeah, it's, no, it's just, it's, just, it's you know, it's, uh, it's I suppose it's a generational thing because I know you're 44, but I'm, that 11 years difference between you and I is significant. I, I listened to radio, or did do, but until I, podcasts became really popular. Exactly, and I, I think, I'm still thinking the majority of people pick things up on radio, but they don't. No, they, not really, they, no. I mean, radio's fine, but it's it's the old tune in it. Do I'm not, t- don't tell me what time to no, tune no. in. I want to download it and listen to it on the bus. But it's it's like, well, when we're on holiday, my wife and I, we listen to Radio 4, because you can, on the, in- on the internet. Yeah. Being middle class and that, but we always, of course, yeah, yeah, and also <laughs> it's intellectual. We only ever listen to it live, and you know, right. you download all these programs, yeah, and then yeah, it yeah. sometimes it stalls, you know, it just cuts out, but you can right. still get the download stuff. But for some reason, we never do. It's kind of like we're of that generation where we we seek some, we find comfort in being told when we're going to listen to something. No, no, I, I, I suppose yeah, I, can, I can still relate with that. I do it with Coronation Street. Um, if it's on it, if I'm watching it, it's on at half seven, I'll watch it, yeah. but if it's been recorded. I'm not necessarily yeah, going to watch yeah, yeah. it. I'll just watch the next one. I've been told when lunchtime is, isn't it? Is it lunch? Lo- yeah. I'm a grown up and have lunch whenever I want. Yeah, 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 yeah. I suppose so. Right, so this section yep. is the frugal filmmaker section. Right. I'm going to give you an example. Mm-hmm. Uh, you with your vast amount of experience in frugal, well, not necessarily frugal filmmaking, but filmmaking and camera work yep. and lighting. I got, um, do you know the little clip on lights? Like little, yes, little yeah. things you plug yeah. in, it's just a light socket with a clip on it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, we were working on something in the studio, very dark in that studio. There's, mm. no, there's only one sort of little tiny window. It was the brain barrage stuff. You've probably not seen it. Um, it's it's like um, a parody of um, a podcaster, but a, a right wing sort yeah. of American podcaster, you know, yeah. the, the Alex Joneses of this world. So we were trying to light it. And what I did, I got a bar from one of my sort of lighting yeah. stands, shoved it on the the roof mm-hmm. with two little crappy little hooks that hold pitches up. Mm-hmm. Put these four sort of clips on. Yeah. 100 watt bulbs in each. 400 watt. It cost me eight quid. Brilliant. Uh, I don't know what frequency they were, but it was fine. They were, it was pretty white. watt bulbs? Yeah. It, well, they were, they were rated up to 150. And they were the candle ones. Jeez, that's just, bright, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It needed, you need some light. I mean, I, I, I just wanted the quality a bit better. Yeah, I mean, what sort of camera are you using for that? That's quite a lot of light, really. Mine's, um, what you said, it's pitch black. Yeah. It's pitch black. And, and basically, we bounced two off the ceiling and then put two down. Oh, right, yeah. And so it's, it's got to yeah. have that sort of, yes. pod, you know, yeah, that yeah, sort yeah. of podcast costy look. Like, so they are a bit Sounds off, great. Right? 
But yeah, so that that cost me eight quid. Yeah, um, and it's fine, and I can disconnect them, take it wherever I want in a bag. Da, da, da. And great. So, and what have I got to do now to say whether it's good or not? Come up with a I don't, one of your own. Oh, I see. Right. Okay. Now, the thing I'd say about what you be what you've got to be careful of there is. Yeah. Uh, it's just I, I absolutely totally agree just find any old like it's how safe just little clips sticking it. make sure that can't come down on someone's head oh yeah no it, it was it was a distance away it was over a desk and, and I secured it on the, yeah. the ceiling but one of the safest things you can do is for about 8 quid buy an ELCB earth leakage breaker oh right yeah you know they're, they're basically it's like a, a plug thing it plugs into the wall and you plug your cable into it yeah and have an on off button yeah, on, on a test, and what happens if that fell down on someone's head? Yeah, it might burn them. But the moment there's a leak of exceeding 15 milliamps, right, it would have cut out. So no one could get an electric shock. Right, 15 milliamps apparently, as I've been told, is the uh, minimum of that need to kill you. Right. So it cuts out before it gets there. So right. you cannot get an electric shock. Milliamps? Milliamps, yeah. Right. It's a tiny, tiny, tiny amount, a little trickle. So it could be that there's a little bit of wiring wrong. If right. it's clicking off all the time, yeah, yeah. then you know you're safe. It costs eight quid and you're safe. Yeah, yeah. You know, we, so. I was shooting a music video once, yeah. and we had this lovely... It was a band. So they, they looked very dark, the mm. characters. That basically, we didn't want the guitarist and the bass guitarist yeah. scene, so we got these like really big like grey hoodies so yeah. they went over the face it was quite eerie looking it was for oh um na, 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 na. passenger so it was a dance version of passenger <laughs> do you know passenger by yeah, i do but it's like that name? yeah I was i'll, I'll name that tune in three and a half minutes <laughs> was, da, 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 da. it was the jazz yeah. version yeah <laughs> <laughs> so this was like a dance version it was um yeah. i can't remember what they call it the um like a triplets thing anyway so it was a really good version I've just I've just squashed down on my seat. <laughs> Have you ever done this sort of thing before, Tony? Yeah, once, Not recording, once. dropping your chair. Just, you think you keep showing me things by by shaving them with your hands, and this is I, yeah. this is audio. Well, I, people won't. They'll be all right with the audio the description, yeah, like, yeah. but I do sort of describe things in my hands see as this. well. It's like this bit here. See that? See that? <laughs> so anyway, we were doing the stage. We had these two guys on bass player guitarist and the drummer in the middle and we just wanted the light going through the drummer yeah. more than anything so we set up a big I think it was some, you know like a thousand watt yeah. but it, a redhead but it was like a cheap one a cheap redhead and a cheap bulb <laughs> and we we sort of put the the flaps quite barn narrow doors. yeah the uh, French flaps no the barn doors all right put, the doors on the side of the lamp yeah the barn doors yeah I was getting mixed up right so we put the barn doors quite yeah. thin so it was just a strip yeah. light and it looked brilliant about five minutes in, yeah. bang, it popped the bulb out in the back of the drummer's head. Oh, <laughs> it was terrible, yeah, and it proper shot it out as well. Yeah, it was yeah. like a projectile. Well, I, 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 really, really long, long time ago, we used to use blondes, which are big 2K lamps yeah. uh, with no lenses in the front of them. Yeah. And this is days of film, so you need a lot of light because film wasn't nearly as sensitive as digital uh, technology is now. Yeah. And was light. It was filming this, this flat. It's a council flat, uh, and it's got a balcony outside. So we put this this two K lamp outside, shining light into the kitchen. Uh, through the window was open actually. Oh no, sorry, no. We used one light outside. The blonde was inside. Right. I had to replicate the daylight. Anyway, the blonde blew up. Right. And you know, kitchen top surfaces. They they kind of made like chipboard with, with like a a resin surface made yeah. look like marble or something. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, it shot the glass out, the molten glass, at such high velocity, it embedded itself into the plastic. That would have been right. dodgy, wouldn't it? If you if that had hit somebody, that would have been Jesus. Can you imagine? <laughs> so well, maybe they should put the uh, grill on the front of them. Uh, yes, yeah, should... I think we should have had a grill on the front of that, that one. Yeah, ah, that's what right, they're there right, for. Right. But it's only actually no, there was a grill, but they were only. Uh, they're not. It's, if, when you, if you look at lighting, you see a very, very fine mesh. Almost looks like a, some kind of a sieve. Yeah. That's not a safety grill. That is a way of reducing the amount of light. To uh, uh, it's called a. They call it a scrim or a, a mesh. Right. So you you could put one in and it will reduce the light by a precise amount. Uh, normally a stop, which is half. So it would turn a two k lamp into a one k lamp. Right. Or you could put a half of scrim in. You know. See, I always thought the white, you know, the tracing paper. I thought that was scrim. Well, sorry, yeah, we they they were called, there's a mesh was the metal mesh. Scrim is is a generic term, but it's is for kind of it looks a bit like a uh, cotton. Uh, pressed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. It's gone very quiet now. No, we're gonna we're gonna go into our next section. Oh right, okay then. This is the quiz. 
Are you ready? <laughs> there was something I was going to say. I never talked about my frugal bit. Oh, sorry, go on. Yeah, because yeah. we've got time. Well, you did. You just said buy something that were eight quid. I thought it's no, no, no. cheap, though. My experience, I had to, and this one, I always thought I wanted to be a, li- a great lighting drama cameraman, you know, drama lighting cameraman, all that, mm. which I do, but I'm not going to be. But one of the things I really used to enjoy was be given very, very limited resources and make it work. And I love yeah. the idea of, if you divorce yourself from reality and think only of the rectangle you're looking through, Yeah. That's all the viewers ever going to see. So mixed with the yeah. right sound, you can do great stuff. So we had to film. We were doing a uh, some kind of comedy thing for Granada. Johnny Vegas was in it at one point. But anyway, we ended up as these two guys. They weren't necessarily the funniest people on the planet. And we had to film in this pub in Chalton. It's it was shut. It's seven seven o'clock in the evening because it didn't open till later for some reason. Right. November pouring with rain outside. The scene was two country hicks hillbillies. Right. Play, uh, one dancing around playing the banjo and one sat on the chair. No, one sat on the chair playing the banjo, one walking around. In the Midwest. Right. So you couldn't be much further in away. In the Midwest. In the Midwest. So, right, some, right, right. so I said, what are you going to do? And in those days, it sent out, you had a, a 2K blonde lamp, yeah, two redheads and two uh, Ari 650s or something like that. Yeah. Which are 650 watt lamps with the lens in. And you think, well, how am I going to do this? And this for me was brilliant. So what I got was... A lighting stand, and I got a piece, an old piece of a cardboard box, yeah. and cut slats in it. All right, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. And because you know, as a cameraman, you have to understand about how shadows are made, and how you play with shadows. Yeah. I then moved the the two K lamp a certain distance so that the the bits of cardboard cast very strong Scary shadows shadow. across the guy on the chair while he's playing his banjo. Right, right. And then I used one other lamp just to bounce off the ceiling. Yeah. So there's a bit of light in the room. And I knew that by playing uh, playing banjo music and the sound of like the cicadas outside and, that, that, and exposing it a certain way, it looked like this guy was sat in a dark shack with the sun blasting through the cracks in the wall. Oh, and it did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and you think, well, what's that taken? Well, a bit of cardboard. Exactly. That's that's no cost at all. So that's probably beaten my my yeah, uh, yeah. eight pound one. But I mean, that's what it is. Is you just got to stop thinking. And students often have that difficulty. They think, well, you know, they would have students are often have a difficulty <laughs> stopping thinking. <laughs> About certain things. Oh, right, right. Yes, no, good point. <laughs> They'll think, yeah, no, that's, uh, we need, a, we need a, the, the sun outside, we need a blind on the window. You say, no, you right. don't. You just need everything to look like it's like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's the fun of it. So that's my, uh, you know, whatever it is, budget. Is it, what did you enjoy most about your role? As a cameraman? Yeah. Or, or lighting. Or lighting. Uh, uh, light, it, it's, <clears throat> for me, it was, there's two things. Lighting, turning, turning something that clearly wasn't what you wanted to be into what it so it looked like it. That was yeah, brilliant. Yeah, yeah. You think, God, it really looks the part. And the other thing is sometimes you'd be on a documentary and the, the inverse is absolutely true and everything works. People just, that deep two shot and yeah. they say, you're one, they move and it becomes two, two and a close shot and then spin round. You think, this is like ballet. It's, they're, they're choreographed. The sh- every shot is lending itself to me and those days were wonderful and in other days, no matter what you did, you missed it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or they yeah, just yeah. stepped out of frame and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. So they're, they're, they're the bits I really, really enjoyed was was the fakery of lighting. It just made it as magical. So you like light, the lighting? Love lighting, lighting yeah. Right, right, yeah right. It's just turning that rectangle into something it isn't. Yeah, yeah. You know. What about you? What do you like about filmmaking? I don't know. Cause I'm you sort of... Um, make films all the time, don't you? Yeah, and I'm, I'm, I always get involved with, with every part of it. You know, yeah. even... Even <laughs> singing the theme tune, you know, <laughs> it's terrible. I'm the theme tune. I, theme I do have a not. A, I, I do have an issue with. I think it's just because. Well, with handing over roles and responsibilities, yeah. I do sort of oversee everything yeah. anyway. But I think that's just because I've been messed about so many times in but, the past. But I was interested. In, I was interested when you uh, to hear when you was talking to your man on the other show that. You don't like teaching full time because you like messing around film. Do, and I wondered if you also don't want to f- make films full time, so you do other things to sort of motivate them. I think so. Yeah, but I mean, it's costly. You know, if you're trying to self self fund a is, film, it is. But it's, it's, I was talking costly. to a Channel Four exec the other day about your Bolton uh, MC Danny Smash film. I tell you what, hang on, let's let's play a little verse from MC Danny Smash now. Oh yeah. Respect B-Town, yeah? Respecting it all the way. 
My name is Danny Smash and I'm here to impress I'm gonna tell you why this tone is the best Now listen, as I spit my rhyme like my girlfriend's ass. This tone is fine, we've got drive-bys But not like the states We've got cobbled roads and some defeats There's a big aerial looking over the tops And if you're hungry then we've got chip shops and Greg's if you want some pies in the marketplace, if you want new ties, now listen to my song about this place, cause we're rolling and Let's B-Town is it. our base. O, yeah, rolling the baby. 1.4 turbo diesel, yeah. Let's do it. We got B to the O, B to the L to the T to the O. It's cool, isn't it? Oh, I really enjoyed that. I'm to, it's a trip down memory lane listening to that again. And uh, they were saying, uh, that, uh, I was talking about it, and they said, who's that? I said, oh, I've shown you this before, blah, blah, blah. I said, oh, God, that guy's really talented, isn't he? He's brilliant. Done it. <laughs> the guy, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> no, you, you. Dope. And uh, I remember at the time, I'd got you an opportunity to work on a shoot over in Liverpool. Oh yes, and yeah. You, I didn't, didn't you didn't, didn't fancy doing it? No, no, I did. It, didn't. it didn't go through. It didn't. It happen. did go through. Yeah, because I had to do it in the end. No, none of because you wouldn't do it. It didn't happen. What well, at the time? I I was all for it. Yeah. Yeah, it bloody well did. It was a PD on on shooting something about um an Arndale or a mall. Yeah, or something. yeah, yeah. yeah. It, I was all up for that, and it got cancelled. Whether they cancelled it, moved it to a different... Oh, the show never happened? No, no, I mean... The, the, the pilot? Actual, yeah, the no, pilot. the show... Yeah. Oh, no, because I, I, I had to cover, because I said, I'll get you a student. No, I was definitely up for that. Oh, yeah. Tony, for no, I was reason. definitely up for that. I w- we'd, we'd sorted everything out, and then it was just a case of, anyway, oh, yeah, it wasn't I was saying that you, I think you just want to do it. I did went, not, yeah, yeah, I was yeah, teaching yeah, at the time. So I had to go down there and do <laughs> it and teach. But anyway, they were saying how talented you were. And actually, you you should really. I mean, I know you and I have had this conversation before. Of terms to move to London, get work and stuff like that. But it does. I mean, the thing is, it does. Life gets in the way of that. And if you want life, you want to have a life, you have to sort of say, well, I'll I'll, I'll never. Move. But this, it's just this exec was looking at it again, saying, God, that bloke's really talented. That was brilliant. That was. He should um, should have given me my email with it. <laughs> You'd have to go to London. I can't. You know what? I can't understand anybody. My my son's got a, a year down there doing something because of he's on a sandwich course, mm. and he loves it. He's young and all that. But the thing is, I mean, it's so hard to get somewhere to live, to find enough money to live by. He's gonna love it down there. Yeah. But he's a shame. But anyway, yes. Well, I don't know. We've got talking about you, but yeah, but no, it yeah, struck yeah, me. Yeah, but maybe <laughs> actually, and and it's, this is the industry as well. This has got to be a little bit careful of. This is the industry. Is they think, well, hang on, you're talented. You know, you make some great stuff, but you only want to do it part time. There must be something wrong. You think. Well, why must they? Why, why is it wrong to say, I don't want to give every waking hour over, 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 over to ambition? I'd love to be able to do creative things yeah. full-time, um, as full-time mm. you know, as there is. I, when, when I used to do music videos, I would, the amount of hours that you'd spend on doing something, pre-production, yeah. production, post-production, yeah. would be incredible. It wouldn't be worth doing you know, at yeah. the end, really. Yeah. It, would, it just wouldn't. Um, but I, I used to love it especially the producing part, pulling people in from different yeah. places and getting it to sort of work correctly. But the only thing is, for me now, I can't do it because I can't afford to do that. Yeah. I need to work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've got to do teaching because it's... Yeah, you know, but, I, I, but I don't mind teaching. It's not like I, I hate teaching. No, I no. And I, 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 I like it. I don't... I think a good... If you could mix it, do half and half, yeah. that'd be perfect. But I don't... See, I don't have a problem with people who don't have that drive to say, well, I'm going to give up everything else in my life just to do it. And you think... yeah. Why? Why would you do that? Because actually, some people love doing that. Some people, like yeah. Tom Ford, you know, he every every waking hour he works. He loves it. That's great. But yeah. if you don't, it doesn't make you a lesser person. Just yeah. because you you might want to dabble or you fifty fifty, I, I don't have a problem with that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But I was just interested, and you struck me as perhaps one of those people who got that real good work life balance thing going. It's kind of. You understand it? A little bit, yeah. I could do with some more work, to be fair. I'm waiting for you to leave so I can get some hours. <laughs> <laughs> but I've just applied for one, actually, in Manchester. Oh, really? Yeah, well, I think I've got it. Where? Um, I can't. All right, of course, no, you I'll tell you after. Yeah. Well, well, it's not recording anyway. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, it's been recording, though, this one. Right, well, we'll move on to the quiz. All right, so, oh, yeah, quiz, on. yeah. Here we go with the uh, My Ident. Quiz time. It's time to test your general knowledge in the world of film and production. That's snappy, isn't it? It is, isn't it? Yeah. 
alexanderdoddy.com for all your uh, narration and ident <laughs> needs. Right, question one. Yeah. Who wrote the children's story, James and the Giant Peach? Roald Dahl, often mispronounced as Ronald. Is it the people... Do people pronounce it as Ronald? It's <laughs> my, obviously Roald, isn't it? My wife did a documentary about Roald Dahl, and there was a researcher on the team who kept writing all the... When my, my wife is an exec producer, and uh, she's, she's sorting it all out. And every time he would come back with the notes, he'd change everything to Ronald. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it was Roald Dahl. So your wife's an executive producer? She is, yes. And you're a cameraman? I'm not a cameraman, I'm a <laughs> university lecturer. <laughs> you are, not, yeah, true, true, true. Senior lecturer? Uh, for the time being, yeah. We'll, we'll talk about that after. Um, I, I was going. I was trying to find a pen, but I'm not even going to pen. I'm that badly organised. It's all right. I'll memorise the, okay. the numbers. There was in that last when you leant down. <laughs> it's <is> great. <laughs> it just sounded like you farted. It's like it's the seat. Yeah, Honestly, I know it. it is the seat. <laughs> <laughs> it's so unprofessional. Mm. When I was interviewed at Bolton FM, it wasn't like this. <laughs> Go on. Next question. Second question. Yeah. Eric Claudine yeah. is the dis- disfigured genius in which 1943. Film. Don't know. You don't know. No, I could get. I try and get it. I'll be here all day. On, uh, Phantom of the Opera. That's two. That's yeah, good. yeah, yeah. You're on it. You're on it. Do you I know might not even said his name right. Go on. I, sorry. I saw, saw the Phantom of the Opera, 1928 version. You saw it in 19. Well, I oh, shot right, yeah. it in. 19, <laughs> saw the 1928 version. You should see some of these. It's beautiful. It was down at the Royal Northern College of Music. It had a live uh, keyboard accompaniment. And it was the original. It's the most beautiful film. Ah, so so accompaniment with the silent movie yeah. itself, right, right. And it's it's in black. It's not in black and white. It's in monochrome. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, in in the in the catacombs, it's all blues and blacks. Right. For going into purples, because they tint it. And in the upstairs in the theatre, it's all oranges and blacks. So it's sepia. It's all hand tinted, ah, right, right. except for three and a half minutes when they have the big ball in in the big ballroom. Three and a half minutes of hand painted colour. All the faces, all the trousers, the oh, shirts, the dresses, 24 frames a second, three and a half minutes, hand painted. It's like well, opening your eyes to fairyland. Did they not do that with the Christmas one? The. Oh, okay, Clarence. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> Come on, it's everybody's got it. Yeah, that's the yeah. one. Yeah. I don't know if they hand to that. I've seen that, but I only have well, seen that, it. In that black that and got, white. I've seen it in colour. But this is 1927. They oh, right, so they've actually recolored. They, they colored it then. They colored it. They, they, right, there was right, no right, color. They this painted was recolored, it. Weren't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's the most beautiful thing. You could keep an eye out for the Royal Northern College. We went to see uh, F.W. Murnau's uh, Sunrise, again, live organ accompaniment. Right, right. Wonderful. Anyway, go on. I went to, um, I w- went watching Krellin. I'm going to get Krellin on in a couple of weeks. Oh, yeah, yeah. He was at the Royal, Royal Exchange in Manchester doing the, I can't remember which. Oh, oh Happy Days with, um, what's her name? What, Monday Maxine Tuesday, Peake. Happy Days? No. <laughs> It's, was um, it the funds? <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's basically Maxine Peaks in this big mound yeah. of earth. And Krellin's at the bottom of the mound. Sounds in a hilarious. Hole. Is that a comedy? <laughs> You'd think, it, I'll be honest, he probably won't listen to it anyway. I didn't get it. I didn't get it. Krellin was good in, you know, because it was spinning as well. Yeah. Slowly it spinning. was to do with spinning. <laughs> <laughs> and, it, and it was basically two hours of... of um, her dialogue. I mean, when it was written, I, I got it after. I gave him a lift on. Yeah. He, was, he was explaining it after. Yeah. It's um, it was obviously a giant metaphor about women and you know how she a marriage basically. Right. Uh, there was no communication with her husband. You know, she felt the weight of the world and all the rest of it. And it was written in sixty one, so it was quite poignant yeah. at the time. But I, I'll be honest, it was sort of oh, but, you know, yeah. a bit too a bit too yeah, cultured for me. That I'll have to. Uh I can see it when I got less time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can use that line again because you didn't <laughs> yeah, record the yeah, first time. It, yeah. <laughs> right, question three. Yeah. In the TV series Night Rider, the car was called Kit. Yeah. What does the acronym stand for? Uh, oh, I don't know because I thought that program was rubbish. Did you? Yeah, I did. It was one of my favourite programmes yeah. when I was a child. <laughs> the Night Industries 2000, but you wouldn't have got it. No. So, right, so I'm going to move on. Who was the male lead? Who starred with Demi Moore in the film Ghost? <laughs> Ghost. <laughs> Ghost. Patrick Swayze. Ah, yeah. You're a Swayze fan. Who no. is. <laughs> in a word. <laughs> who is known for exploiting the potential of the close up? Uh, I don't know. I've never heard of exploiting the potential, but uh, W.D. Griffiths is the person who invented it. 
But I don't know who... WD, WD Farter? WD Farter, yeah. DW Griffiths. Yes, D.W. Griffiths. <laughs> Griffiths. Yeah, correct. Yeah. That's, that's the answer. All oh, right, yeah. Anyway. Who directed and starred in the 1969 film Easy Rider? Fonda. Who? Fonda. Peter Fonda on a Honda. <coughs> oh, not uh, Hopper on a Chopper. It is, yeah. Is it? Yeah, it's the Hopper on a Chopper. Hopper. He's, he disappeared after that, though, didn't he? Who, Hopper? Yeah. Hardly. He was... He was uh, in uh... Mario Brothers, Dennis Hopper. <laughs> he was he... in bleeding Mario Brothers. Yeah, but he was in le- 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 the classic film. So uh, Blue Velvet. Yes, he was in Blue Velvet. He was but in... from, from from being an. Did he win an Oscar for that? I don't know. For I'm sure he won an Oscar for Easy Rider, and from being an Oscar winner early on. Now? He was in Apocalypse yeah, Now. Yeah, not some. Yeah, yeah, sport. Yeah, he's the photographer. Yeah, yeah. Because he's he, an yeah, artist. Quite good in that as well, isn't he? Yeah, he's an artist, wasn't he? Right. Yeah, and he, right. he suffered a lot from mental illness as well. Ah, right. That's, I know he had a bit of alcoholism, I think. Yeah, I think. he's uh, suffered terribly from mental illness. Right. He's dead now, isn't he? Is he? Yeah, he died not so long ago. Oh, I didn't know. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know he's died. He's a great actor. Oh, what a shame. He was good in um, Mario Brothers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, question seven. Got seven. It. Seven, is it already? What in the industry is a red it's a camera. No, it's a colour. It's part of the red, green and blue. <laughs> it's a type of camera. <laughs> my my answer says colour. Next question. Which malformation was Marilyn Monroe born with? That she had changed through plastic surgery. Is that the one you're on about? Mm, not sure, not sure. Oh, right, her nose. No. Oh, she had a bump on her nose that she had changed. Oh, does she? Well, she, everyone said she didn't. It's, she did. it's bigger than that. Ma- I don't know. I think Blackburn. <laughs> she was born with six toes. Was she really? Yeah. Why Blackburn? But have you not heard the stories? No. I've nothing against people from Blackburn. And they got uh, six the record toes. label was in Blackburn. And they got six toes. <laughs> it's just a, between it's, them. Yeah. Is that because their family tree has no branches? And more than likely, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Next question: What is a gaffer? In the film industry. Yeah. A gaffer is the guy who's in charge of the ele- uh, all the electricians. So he'll liaise with the DOP uh, in terms of the director and organise as and when. It's like almost like a site manager, but they, they have a sound knowledge not only of all the technical requirements and as and when they come on and off set, but they will also have... A, 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 they could light the set as well. They're, aesthetically, yeah. they're, they're great, talented people and they will come up with solutions with the DOP. Were you a gaffer? No, I wasn't. I, mean, I know a guy. A lot of prayers to them, then. Uh, there's a lot. Of, they're brilliant. A good gaffer's brilliant. D- there are, yeah. I worked on a, a quite a low budget independent film, yeah. but they had a good cast and it was well organised. And and the gaffer on it, yeah. guy in a transit van, you know, one of them, yeah. loads of crap connected to his his like uh, his back belt. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they yeah love no, absolutely. That, they love it. But I was talking to one <laughs> gaffer, who's a friend of a friend, really. He's a nice guy, but he's, I know him through a friend. And he was saying he had he had to, was working on a shoot, and this is what they do is it shows just how useful they are. He was on a shoot, a drama where this person gets in the lift, and part of the scene is while they're travelling in the lift, it's like being in a nightclub or a disco. Hmm. You think right, flashing lights coming on off, so great, yeah. But the camera shot is you follow them into the lift, yeah, you know, with a sort of steady cam, and then you go around them as the lights flash and flash. Right. So where are you going to get the lights, given that you're in a lift mm-hmm. and the camera's going around 360 degrees, round and round as they're listening to the music? You put it on the camera? No, because you've got a whole set of flashing lights. And oh, so right. what he did, he designed with the props people a lift with all four panels that lift up and down. So when ah, you can only see yeah, two, yeah, yeah, those yeah. two are up with lights flashing. As it goes around, they come up and down, up and down. And they're showing oh, the that's lights. complicated, isn't it? Really well? complicated. What was that for? I don't know. Some uh, Probably an advert. He did a lot of commercials. But right, uh, right. but it was, you know, he's, he's working out by moving certain sections, you can get lights in. Yeah. You know, otherwise they're all too toppy. So yeah. you need them a bit lower. Have you done any adverts? Uh, yeah, I did. Uh, a couple for Fairy Liquid and uh, a couple for <laughs> Superdrug. Did you, what was her name? The woman from the Fairy Liquid advert. Oh, no, no, no what, what it, uh, it was in those, the reason I got onto them was there was uh, a big s- s- industrial dispute between, uh, what's the actors union? Bexo? Equity. Oh, equity. Equity. Yeah. equity and the film industry. Right. And so what they decided to do was uh, 
not use actors, but use real people. So we went right. to real people's homes and, you know, make it look like we'd filmed real people washing up and real right, people right, right. Yeah, putting yeah. their makeup ah, on yeah, and yeah, stuff yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. So, and I got through a bloke I did some work with in the children's department at the BBC. Right. And they're fine. To, to be honest with you, and I, oh, I did one for something and Brown, the wallpaper people. And uh, they're not the most... I mean, they weren't massive budgets. I got, I did all right at it, but right. what happens is you get all these people from from the company, yeah, and then all the people from the advertising agency, and they all want their input. So there's yeah, one example. I'll give yeah, you an yeah, instance yeah. where what there's one trick you use when you when you're filming on a set. So you've got three sides of a set, and, and there's a door in the set. You know, to make it look like there's a, a room outside, to make it look like there's a real world there. Yeah, you shine a little, very gentle amount of light through the bottom of the door. Yeah, it's like there's a hallway or another room next door. Yeah. So I was doing this wallpaper advert, and I said, uh, "I said, okay, I said, I just want to put a light behind that door. It just makes it feel, you know, like it's a real one. And I said, okay. So I put it there, and they said, uh, is that bright enough? And I, I said, yeah, I, I think any bright is going to draw attention to it because yeah. you're drawn to light. And someone else said, well, I think it should be bright. And someone said, I don't think it should be that bright. I know. Let's do one bright. Let's one do one not bright. Oh Let's do one God. your way. And the thing is, the so actors... you've got one that looks like Close Encounters. Yeah, <laughs> no, no. but the actors got to do the same thing. Then you've got all the other stuff going on. Yeah, and so yeah, if they yeah. get that wrong, so you did like six takes. Ah, uh, should be yeah. One person should have the, the control. Yeah, the and, director you, and you don't, uh, yeah. and you don't get that. Right. Uh, I, I was on. I was on a shoot with. Um, I did the music for a pot noodle advert. Oh, brilliant! Excellent. Yeah, um, Sticky Rib, the unpopular one. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> but I went to the shoot. And that was, uh, to be honest, that was great. It yeah. was dumb. They had um, a little set where it was somebody's bedroom and they were playing the tunes, yeah. you know, because it was very dance music. Yeah, yeah. And then he sort of just, and all the, like, as he did some movement, all the walls fell down and he was in a nightclub. It was brilliant <laughs> as he did it. In fact, the one, one part of it, yeah. this, I mean, it's obviously the parodying people who listen to that type yeah. of music. He ripped off his tracksuit and he had another tracksuit on him. Oh, right? fantastic! <laughs> but you know, proper yeah. with the with the wires and everything. Yeah. Great. No, mine yeah. wasn't that good. <laughs> it's it great fun. Right, next question. Yep. Who should play the new Bond? Uh, who should play? Well, I don't know. And my, don't get. There's a correct answer for this. Yeah, I know. The thing is, is my wife's got it down to two people: Idris Elba. Or the guy, uh, the gingerhead guy who's making, he was in uh, Happy Valley. He's a bloody brilliant actor. For you, who's that? He's, uh, he's, in, he's been in quite a few things. He was in a, a thing recently where he played a financier who got involved with the mafia. Uh, he's, he's the up and coming actor. He's absolutely brilliant. So she, she reckons. I need to find out who that is because yeah. if it's mine, there's no disagreement. So who's yours then? I can't tell you until you tell me yours. Well, no, because I, no, I, I don't know. Right, so what was he in? Happy Valley? Happy Valley, and he was... Uh, uh, what's it? This other thing where he played a vicar. But who... Is he little? No, he's Sorry. a tall guy. Who's the villain in Happy Valley? Villain in Happy Valley. This is great radio, this, isn't it? Isn't I can it? imagine your listeners here on the edge of their seat. <laughs> oh, <is> it... <laughs> This network it's trying to get me to sign in. Villain in Happy in Valley. Happy Valley. Crowley was in Happy Valley recently. Was he? Yeah. yeah. Recently, are they just it, making it, another series? I, is it? Is it season two? Three. Uh, season he three. What the, you're on now? Uh, well, yeah, they've only shot two series of it. Uh, Tom Tommy Lee Royce. That was that was the character, yeah. Who played him? Uh, James Norton. Yeah, James Norton. That's right. it. No. Nah. Brilliant actor. So, okay, who's the right answer then? Tom Hiddleston. Tom Hiddleston. Uh, no, a drink of water. Yeah, Tom Tom Lorkey Hiddleston. Yeah. No, nah, it's a drink of water. He's, he's, he's just uh, hasn't no. got it. That it's def- it has to be Tom Hiddleston. It's down on my on my sheet here. This is through um, research. <laughs> there is. <laughs> and, I heard something that meant he's not going to be or something. He did something. I don't know what it was. But apparently, he's not going to be him. He, I, th- I mean, I have you seen talks- him in the Have you seen him in the Jaguar advert? The, no. Where he, it's good to be bad, brilliant. He's, they've got uh, Ben Kingsley, the other guy from whatever, and uh, Tom Hiddleston. James Norton, I tell you, it's got to be him. But I think Idris Elba would be good. Well, because we've got a different difference of opinion, yeah. I have to go and ask the Dazza. So, I'll, two minutes, I'll be back. The what? The Dazza. 
Right, Deza. Better phone him because I'm too far away. Hello. Hey, Deza. Hello. Hey, just a quick one. Who do you think should play the new Bond? Ah, that's an old brainer. Tom Eggleston. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, that's what I said. Hey, why do you keep calling me at tea time? See ya. So, there you have it. The desert agrees with me. So, sorry about that. But, yeah, what's your man called again? I've forgotten. <laughs> See, he's not even that memorable, is he? John I know my, my guy's name's Tom Hiddleston. Yeah, John Hawthorne. I forgot his name. I yeah, John Hawthorne. I don't know. <laughs> From Happy <laughs> Valley. He's a, Everybody knows that guy. He's a good actor. He's a brilliant no, actor. I that. I like the guy from Flowers. Have you been watching Flowers? No, no, no. Nobody's watching it. No, no, no. no. no Peter hasn't watched it and either. And it's got Olivia Colman in, hasn't it? Yes. She's yeah. brilliant. She's, she's, she's very good. She's just yeah. such a great yeah. actress. She's, she's got some good range as well. She's brilliant comedy. I'll tell you what I like, and it reminds me in many ways, actually, and I can confirm this, that you did. You were watching it, was uh, Detectorists. Yes. Isn't that wonderful? Peter was in it. He was in uh, the Christmas special. Was he? Yeah. Oh, I didn't recognise him. Yeah, he, he, he play? plays a foreman. Um, oh, right. where he goes in and he's complaining that somebody died or something I can't remember the, the, the plot bit on that I think someone's died or something and he goes in um, oh, right. what's his name the little guy um, quite a big actor Toby Jones Toby Jones yeah, brilliant Toby actor. Jones goes in it's where Toby Jones he's his supervisor sort of thing is thing, isn't it? is he that just, him he just drinks tea I was watching that yep yep, yep. Instead, he's <laughs> reading the paper yep. yeah that's right yeah. what, what did he do I don't know <laughs> yeah yeah, that's He's going to look for a mechanic. Apparently, the scene was a lot bigger, and he said it was a lot better when they did it originally, yeah. but they, they must have just cut it down. Yeah, it didn't work it, I didn't realise it was him, because yeah. I suppose cause I've seen him, obviously, when he came here doing thingy with the guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Randolph. Randolph, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. But no, it's, it's a wonderful series, like, beautifully yeah. written, beautifully observed. It's, it's good, isn't it? Yeah, I really enjoyed that. Yeah. Um, yeah, he writes it, doesn't he? Uh, Mackenzie Crook. Yes, and directs it, yeah. Oh, does he direct yeah. it as well? Well, let's only direct some of them. He's what a, we're not all born equal, are we, Tony? No, we're not. But he had a he had a he had a head start, and he he was from south. <laughs> Have we got another question? Is it home time yet? You know what? That's it. That's all my questions. So the last bit, really, yeah. is after the quiz. What's for the future? Now, you, I'll I'll interject on this, but you've been went from being a camera lighting technician doing things like. Um, what's it called that, yeah. that prestigious Chuckle um, Vision come down I with did me. a lot of Chuckle Vision bollocks you've not worked on Chuckle oh, Vision oh loads of it I shot Chuckle Vision yeah honestly really yeah that's going to be your it. highlight then <laughs> that would be tragic <laughs> <laughs> how low do you think I am Chuckle Vision's great Chuckle, they're yeah. back on you know I know I can't believe they're still going they're, they were, they're back on I follow them on Twitter they're, they're about 100 well, Paul I follow Paul and Barry yeah I follow Paul Barry's a little guy isn't he Barry's the older one, yeah, I think. Yeah, I always yeah. got on with the little guy better. He's a very friendly guy. Wow, well, go on, you've got an industry. Yeah, he's an asshole, isn't he, that Paul Chuckle? No, no, just, just, say, it. just say it, Mick. No, 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 just no. He just, he just, he's just, I got on better with Barry. Right, right. It might have been his age thing. That probably was. <laughs> but no, Paul and Barry Chuckle, to me, to you. Yeah, yeah. What's your highlight? Of my life? Of no, my career? No, not your life, no. I don't know, there's no, no one highlight. As I say, you know, there's, there's lighting things when you, you're up against it or... All right, well, what's the best show that you think you've worked on, apart from Come Down With Me? The best the best show would be with some of the big dramas, Mr. Rose Virgins that you've not seen or Middlemarch. You know, you see right. you see, you see see people working and doing great things. Yeah. But then, you know, you travel to see some places and you remember things. That it's just being there was wonderful, you know. So it's just... You, it's like one of the, it takes us right back to the early conversation about education is yeah, yeah. everybody wants a single answer but what's the highlight of yeah, your life yeah, yeah, it, it contextualise yeah. a question you know yeah, yeah. I remember going filming in Siena many 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 years ago in Italy and was going to film the Palio which is this horse race they have on August the 15th yes yeah. and they get each, each uh, section of the town is given a horse they don't train it right and they get a jockey, they nominate a jockey, and they have to run around the track, which is the centre, the, the, the campo in the middle of the town, the kind of field. And uh, they, the winner wins, you know. Right. But there's no training. Of course, there'll only be one winner, so they celebrate the night before. It's absolutely blisteringly hot. And, and in Siena, the streets are all paved in stone. Everything's paved in stone. Yeah. And they're almost like concentric circles, not quite. And all you can hear is these, 
different restaurants with these people celebrating because they hope they're going to win. And right. they sing in the finest tenor voices and they're right till 2, 3 in the morning. They're absolutely uh, wonderful. And it's way too hot to sleep. So I just sat on my windowsill, my feet dangling over the street below, listening to these voices ring out. Was this recent though? No, this was oh, right, right. decades ago. Before right. I, I mean, I'd even met my wife at that point. So blimey, a long, long time ago. Right. But you know, that, so that's something I always remember that. Going to Pakistan, my very first foreign oh, right. trip, driving into and filming at a village before we got there before electricity did. And they were waiting for it. And they're all stood around with Jeez. these fans like that. And I was waiting. And they've got a big dinner table ready. And suddenly, all the air fans came on to cool people down. You know, things like that. So they're, so they're like fine with aren't they? Celebrating 30 years of electricity next year. <laughs> <laughs> yes, although I could understand the Pakistani language a lot easier than I can in those <laughs> yeah, speaking in Farmer. In farmer yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right, so yeah, la- uh, last last point really. No, yeah. n- not really a question. What's... What's, What's the future next? hold? Well, right? I'm leaving Bolton University. Psh, boo. boo. Where I'm are you going, going mate? Where Salford are you going? University. Oh, my God. I know. Well, needs must. Uh, need a new challenge. I realised the same reason I, I moved on from being a cameraman is some people like to change every week. They're, they're all over the place. I, I, yeah. I'm not like that. But actually, after a period of time, things got to change. If you don't oh, yeah, change things, it's, you know, if, you're, if, if you allow something to, to happen, you're complicit. Yeah. So if I find that I'm stagnating and I'm not making any attempt to do something about it, yeah. then it's my fault. Yeah. So yeah. I don't know what it's going to be like at Salford. I know some people who work there, some very good people who work there. Moira's there. Moira's there. Yeah. Uh, some friends I used to work with in, when I was at TV work there. I don't know. It could be jumping out of one frying pan and into someone else's fire. Mm-hmm. No idea. But it will be change. And without change, what do you got to look forward to? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get yeah. that. Yeah. No, I understand. Um so, be, I think it's Bolton's loss to lose you. You're very obviously. kind. But I can understand why you want to move on. <laughs> I think uh, we're, I think part of the Bolton's plan there should just hang about outside the job centre saying, come and join us for three years. <laughs> we want him sandwich. Yeah, get you're Lisa, not going to draw me. Get Lisa out there. You're not going to draw me. You should interview <laughs> Lisa for this show. I, 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 was, I was intending to. Yeah. She let me down. Oh, I she see. Said, so. She I'm said, s- no, no, I'd, <laughs> yeah, I'd ask yeah. you. And Can't I'd find ask, anyone else. Let's ask me. And Mick. Neil as well. You know, I'll, I'll oh, have... so, so I'm third behind Neil and Lisa. <laughs> no, 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 I asked you at the same time. I asked you all at the same time. Yeah. I would have chosen Lisa first because then it would have been male-female yeah, yeah. and sort of broke up the sausage fest that we've been having on the podcast. <laughs> Tell Lisa that. <laughs> yeah. It was sausage fest. She'll deck you. That's why she did it. She said, yeah, all right, then, if you've got too many men in it, fine, I'll represent. Well, am I done? <laughs> right, brilliant. Yeah, thanks Thanks for coming. Well, not for thanks for coming. I had to come to you. Yes. But uh, thanks for agreeing yeah. to do it. Honestly. It's been a pressure. So say bye. Bye bye, listeners. This is Mick Farr signing off for tonight. You've been listening to a confusing load of bollocks. The views and opinions of any guests are not necessarily that of Custard Room Productions. And if you are offended or do not agree with any of the comments, please take it to Twitter and we'll ignore you, you snowflake. This episode was sponsored by AlexanderDoddit.com. For all your voiceover and narration needs, he provides a full professional service, all digitally supplied. Remember to check the show notes for links to any films or social media mentioned throughout. Or if you're thinking of sponsoring the show, please contact me at Custard Room on Twitter. Thanks for listening.